RTS, the Royal Navy, the Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve, the Wavy Navy, the uh, the Fannies, Female Auxiliary Nursing Yeomanry. So if you were a Fanny during the war, then come on, the QAs, the Queen Alexandra the Royal Nursing Service, and the WAF, uh, the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, the WRAX, the WRAX, the Warm Round and Cuddlies, the Home Guard, the Local Defence Volunteers. I'm just racking my brains off the top of my head. Not that I was there, I would know anything about it. The Civil Defence, the ARP, all that sort of thing. So there you are. You can tell us uh, uh, a little bit about what it was like and uh, how you think this nation has come up to your expectations when you were fighting for us. All right, so there you are. Uh, all the regiments, of course, the Lancashires, the Durham Light Infantry, the Yorkshires, the Sherwood Foresters, you know, the Suffolks, the uh, Northamptonshires, the Green Jackets, the Horlock Guards, the Dragoons, the Grenadiers, the Blues and Royals, um, you name it, you tell us. The Welsh Guards, of course, the Royal Manchester Regiment, the Royal Tank Regiment, the Royal Artillery, um, I don't know, I mean, I'm obviously I, I'm not a great military person, so I wouldn't know them all, but you can tell us what you think. Right, study the buffs. And um, also the other thing is, this lad, um, the one who fathered the child with the um, the 12 year old girl right we want to know about that what do you think about that and um, he says he's had uh, stacks of lovers and I think what we need to do is uh, as soon as a young lady becomes mature shall we say then her mother should ensure that she wears Scotty McClue's party pants um, which of course have uh, they're, they're cast in mild Sheffield steel and they have a gusset lock for which mother holds the key so there we are um, I also wonder if we might have some sort of arrangement for young lads when they become mature, uh, say before they're 16, so that if um, anything happened to stir in the forest, perhaps some sort of light flashes on the forehead or something like that, the house lights flash on and off. Uh, so you can tell us a bit about that, but right at the moment you've got to have been in the war or know rather a lot about it. Uh, Chris from Manchester, are you there mate? Dinky do Chris. Uh, dinky do Scotty. Dinky do mate, were you in the war? No, no mate, I'm out of that category of I found this more your topic came up, actually. Oh, well, all right, I'll let you off, then. Well, what I told you, I'm just trying to say, uh, good your show, and I, I love it. Do you enjoy it, sir? I'm a truck driver, like, and I travel to Manchester every night. Oh, and you're, you're, you're a brum? Yeah, I'm a brummy, yeah. Come yeah. Brummy, yeah. You sound like a brum. Excellent <laughs> stuff. That's what we want. We need more brums. And I just think you're, you know, you're, you're the best thing since life, but, man, you're brilliant. Hey, you're some man yourself, I'll tell you. Oh, get I'll it. laugh all the way home. You get us on in the cab, do you? All that yeah, stuff. Hey, brilliant. I listen to you every night, mate. Hey, listen, tell us this. Do you ever see people wanting lifts late at night? Occasionally, yeah. I'm not, man, if I pull them on the services for fuel, they're, yeah, they're all... Oh, where, where are they going? I mean, yeah, what sort of... You know, I don't mean where they're going, but what sort of reason are they wanting to go somewhere at three in the morning? <laughs> I just get choking right now, just, get, just going from place to place. Just I was going down the M6 one night and I saw it, you know, this guy's got this, he's holding up a sign, Birmingham at the slip road, you know, and yeah. I thought, what's he going to Birmingham at half three in the morning for? <laughs> God only knows, Scotty. I can't understand uh, it. I mean, you know, uh, going, to, going to Birmingham at any time of the day, but at half three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, lovely to talk to you, mate, and safe journey. Yes, Scotty. Thank you, mate. Hey, keep listening, because I promise you a good one tonight. I will do, yeah. Thank All you. right, see you, babes. Thank uh, you, do. Right, now, okay, he rang before. Fair enough. That's acceptable. Margaret from Blackpool. Hello, Rose. Hello, darling. Hello, Scotty. Thank you, do. Thank you, do. I wanted to ring you again to say thank you for a lovely week last week and this week. Oh, right. A, a, a busy oh, week. Oh. A busy week. Yes. Never a dull moment, you're Margaret. You're wonderful. You're doing wonderful. And I've been getting the address for the show all week on Sunday. Lovely. And I'll show you know on the, on the phone. You'll come and say hello. Oh, I'm what? I'm going to come and say hello. Oh, I'd love that. And, and it's wonderful. You're, you're lovely to us. You're very kind, darling. Yes. You're lovely to us as well. We look forward to 10 o'clock. You're a very special person, you. Thank you very much. I tell you. you. I promise you a good night tonight. Thank you very much, Steph. And hey. take care of yourself. Hey, and you Look after yourself, Margaret. Dear. Uh, and you. Look forward to seeing you. Okay. Uh, dinky do. Dinky do. Dinky do. Bye bye, darling. Hello. Thank you. What a nice.
nice lady. Now, oh, I've had a letter from Peter from Birkenhead. Uh, dinky do, Scotty. I've listened to you since Century started. Before that, you were on a crap radio station. Um, I am fed up with all the fartheads in the East Midlands moaning about you. Ignore them. Keep up the good work. I live on my own and listen to you five nights a week. You're right about the women. There is a place in the home looking after the men doing housework. Came to the kitchen sink. The last point, Scotty. What about fat women? All they ever seem to do is stuff their faces. Love you too, Scotty. May you stay on the radio for a long time. Best wishes, Peter. Please read this out on here. Pleasure so to do, Peter. Thank you very much for that. Can't beat a tiny bit of congrat. Um, right, we're off to Liverpool to speak to Mick. Are you there, Mick? How you doing, Mick? Hello. 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 Were you in the war? In the... No. No? I was just coming on to talk about the women drivers. Women drivers? Oh, we're not discussing them tonight. We're discussing the war. All right. Is that okay? Do you know out about it? <laughs> right, obviously not. There we are. I always like when we get the, the academics on. He's the professor of anthropology at the University of Life. Right, who have we got here? Is it Sue from Nottingham? Dinky do. Dinky do, darling. How are you? Were you in the war? No, no, my grandparents were. Were they? Um. Is there nobody still alive who was in the war then? I think they are. They, they have, they, have they all pegged it? Oh, good Lord, no. But the reason I was ringing up was um, what you were talking about the other night. The yes. The uh, 12-year-old. Yes. Um, to go about a 14-year-old boyfriend. Yes. Um, obviously, this is a, a very, very um, provocative subject. You it know, is. It is something I, as a parent, find absolutely horrendous. Now, hold on a second, love. Hold on a second. I have to talk to the nation. All right, then. We, we reckon we've had a vote, and we think too many people from the war have actually pegged it. So, um, you don't have to ring up. If you're only in the war, you can ring up anyway. How's that, Sue? <laughs> think that's better? Well done. Well done. Do, do you think that's better? And we'll open this subject to everyone. I was going to have an, an, item, an interesting night of people in the war, but I think too many have pegged it. I think that it's some talking, going back to the war, I think it's something that, um, even though there was an awful lot of good times, you know, uh, comradeship and, and things like that, um, there's an awful lot of bad memories connected with it. Um, I think a lot of people had a fantastic time during the war, though those that survived and weren't maimed. Sorry? Those who survived and weren't sort of maimed had a fantastic time during the war, a lot of them. That were the sort of stories that came out. I mean, my granddad, he lived in London, and he often used to tell me he was an ARP, um, Air Raid Patrol Warden. Air Raid, Air Raid, yeah. Yeah, and uh, as most people know, L London had the, its fair share. I'm not saying that it, it was by any means the worst than anyone else, you know. Oh, no, you're yeah, Nottingham, yeah. Sheffield, Derby, right. uh, Manchester, Liverpool, Preston. Coventry, I mean... Coventry, it Coventry caught it a bit as well, Birmingham. You know, I mean, so all of us, throughout the, the country had our own, well, not me so much, but, you know, got the my own memories of what happened during the war. Right. But how anyway. did you feel if someone turned around and said, you know, they actually saw London burn and they couldn't do a thing about it? I mean, I thought my granddad was really exaggerating. No, you couldn't, love. You couldn't do a thing. Have you never seen the famous picture of London I in have, the Blitz with St. Now. Paul's? I have now, but at the St. Time, Paul's all lit up with, a, yeah. with, a, with a, the fire. Yeah, you know, but when someone turns around and tells you that, you can't envisage it. You're a young kid. You can't envisage what it Dreadful. is. Dreadful. About. Oh, dreadful love. Uh, anyway, anyway you were going to tell me this 14-year-old who yeah, got a girl yeah. of 12 pregnant, That's and he really says, good. he says he's had stacks of lovers, he's had 10 other girlfriends. Oh, well done to him. Anyway. And he's 14, so yeah. I think what we need, we either need the young girls to wear Scotty McClure's party pants, <laughs> with a gusset lock on them. <laughs> chain mail love, yeah, absolutely, a chain letters. And um, either that or you want the guys when, uh, you know, something actually stirs in the forest, a light flashes in the forehead. I, I think personally, it's, um, someone was talking on the radio earlier on today and he was saying that it's about time, instead of helping these people, that we started making it into a form of a stigma. Now, years ago, it used to be that when someone was pregnant, um, out of marriage, they used to be shipped off um, to a mother's and, mother and child uh, hostel where they used to have the child and then they used to go back into the community minus the child. The child used to be put up for adoption. child was put up for adoption, yeah. That's right, and they were put back into the community to hopefully... We should see more of that. Her. Do you know that this country, right, oh. is like a third world country when it comes to this? We are so soft. Yes. Do you, know, do you know the government has put 60 million quid aside? What for? Right, to see if they can cut down single mothers. Well, they can easily cut down on the single mother. Stop making it so easy for them. Stop mm. making it a stigma. 
Instead of having... I mean, I think if a girl if a girl is loose, she should have to wear a party pants. And somebody goes, some lad goes, Whoa, you've got Scottish Buckley party pants on, <laughs> therefore I'm not touching you. Yeah, but joking apart, I mean, I've got a young daughter. I'm not joking. No, I'm, I'm saying, I've my got old, a young daughter. My old yeah, Sheffield still. Me. It would mean you'd clank a bit when you go clubbing, but so what? Oh, the old chastity belt, yeah. Yes. You're talking about maybe, oh, you can't do that. Yes, you'd clank a bit when you were clubbing. You'd have a word for it. All like these less women would be clanking up the stairs of the nightclub. Clank, clank. But the, the, the problem is, that we, we, we've had our rights, us as parents, had our rights taken away. And then all of a sudden, when things start going pear-shaped, they, they start turning around saying, hey, um, wait a minute, you're, you're a parent. You should be doing something about this. A friend of mine, her daughter, was creeping out at night, coming back in at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. She happened by accident to find out about this, and she gave the kid a clout. But I tell, 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 hang on, tell, tell us more, go on. Right, she gave the kid a clout. No, no, before that, go back to the bit before, I missed the bit before. Oh, what, where she was creeping out? Right. Yeah, she was, literally, she was creeping out at night. When mm. everyone else was in bed asleep, she was creeping out to meet the boys, to go party, and to do all sorts of things. Right. Behind her parents' back. When her mother found out, and she raised Mary Hell and lost her temper and, and gave, the, gave the kid a slap. The kid went to school the next day and somehow or other ended up with a black eye. Now, I know my friend and I know for a fact that she would never have resorted to a punch into a, to make it into a black eye. A slap, yes, yeah, but no, nothing else, you know? So we can only assume that she's got one of her mates maybe to smack her or something like that. But anyway, she then reported it to the teacher, who reported it to the headmaster, who reported it to the school nurse, who reported it to the social services, who reported it to the police, who went down to my friend's house and arrested her. They actually arrested her. They took her down to a station and they charged her. Good Lord. They charged her because she raised her hand against her daughter. Good Lord. Now, her daughter became pregnant. And all of a sudden, all these do-gooders were saying, well, you should have kept an eye on your daughter. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? She turned around and said, hang on a minute. You've taken those rights away from me. You have charged me with trying to keep my daughter under control. Here. You have her. She's your problem now. And no, what I don't understand. These people, this this young couple, a resident in South Yorkshire. Now, Scotty McClue, right, mm -hmm. until a year ago, was the biggest thing in South Yorkshire since the Yorkshire pudding, right? And I have talked for hours and hours and hours to the youngsters about dropping their drawers. And South Yorkshire still has the biggest incidence of teenage pregnancy. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I think that it's right, it's the highest something. child pregnancy rate in Britain in South Yorkshire. And South Yorkshire a lot of South Yorkshire are listening right now and I can't understand it. It's, it's something that's very worrying. Very worrying. Especially when you've had Scotty McClue <laughs> telling you time and time again for a year. Yeah, keep your knees together. Keep your knees together. Keep your hands on your hip knees. Yeah. And I really think if you're not going to wear McClue's party pants then we should definitely give them some sort of contraceptive jab. Do you know what this lad's saying? He says that it's the sex lessons at school that have made him promiscuous. Oh, they always find an excuse. You know, these videos, they, they, they inspire people... That's what he's saying. He's, 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 yeah, that's what he's saying. He says they show us videos of men and women naked. They're trying to teach them something. They're trying to teach them responsibility. I wonder if perhaps we should say anything about sex at all in schools. Because well, today there was talk of should you have condom machines in schools. I mean, who is going to teach them? Years ago, they used to be unwanted pregnancy. Yeah, but I'm wondering if we should teach them at all. Well, even then, you're going to have a problem, aren't you? And you make it shameful. You make it shameful so they have to leave school and the child has to be put up for adoption. There should be a law passed that if you have a child, if you have a child, if you have a child out of wedlock and underage, you cannot keep it. Yeah, but they've broken the law anyway, haven't they? Yes, but you can't keep the child. Well, no, I'm in full agreement with you. That's what we should be doing. Lovely to talk to you, darling. Yep, talk hey. to you again. Take care. Dinky do, dinky do. Right, I was only going to have people on who were in the war, but a lot of people want to discuss this teenage pregnancy